install the Pulsar LT in your 2019 and newer 2.7 liter turbo Silverado or Sierra, we must first by disconnecting this factory engine to body control harness located directly here in front of the air box. We must first release the red safety clip by simply pulling it directly up, at which point you can then depress this lower corner of the outside slide connector with your thumb. With that depressed, you will be able to slide this outer sleeve upwards, noticing that the rolling block will start to rotate and allow the harnesses to disengage from each other. It can then be pulled apart and set aside. Next, we want to remove this lower connector from its mount tab that is molded into the factory airbox. Using a small pick tool or a narrow flat blade screwdriver, you can slip it in between the gray connector and the black mounting tab. And by simply pressing backwards on the black tab, it will disconnect the clip inside and you will be able to slip the connector up and off of that tab. We'll set this aside for now as well. Next, we are going to remove the 10 millimeter nut that is on the mounting stud for the front of the factory airbox. So we're using a small ratchet, break that loose. We will then unthread the nut so that we can install the mounting bracket that's included with the Pulsar LT. This powder coated bracket will be installed over that stud so that the clip will be facing closer to the ground. Slide that over the stud and reinstall the factory 10 millimeter nut over the stud. And a ratchet will snug that down. All right, with the mounting bracket installed, we can move on to installing the harness that's included with the Pulsar LT. This is a factory connector that we include, so it will go right back together easily. We'll slide it together, and then that outer shell will slide down. You'll notice that center block rotating until it clicks, and then re-engage that safety clip. This harness can then be tucked down in front of the airbox and slid in to attach to that mounting bracket we just installed. That will hold the harness safely in place. We can then move on to the other end of the pigtail. Again, just sliding it together, sliding the outer shell downwards until it clicks, and then engaging the red safety clip. At this point, we can mount this directly onto that factory mounting tab on the front of the airbox. This gives us a complete factory look and install for the Pulsar LT. The last step to the installation is taking the module and plugging it into the other end of the harness until we hear it click. And then there are some Velcro strips included that will allow you to attach this so it will stay positioned on the top of the factory airbox. You can locate it around the back. We've also included some zip ties so that the module can be set somewhere else should you be running an aftermarket intake that won't allow you to attach it to the lid. At this point, we can move into the cab and use our steering wheel controls to set up all of the features. Okay, with the Pulsar LT now installed under the hood, the harness is connected, the module is mounted. We can now move into the vehicle and start setting up the features of the Pulsar LT. In this particular vehicle, we wanna press and hold the engine start button to turn on the power to the vehicle without starting the engine. You hold that button for about five seconds. The light will turn green on the button and you'll see that your dash will turn on along with your radio. Using the select button on the right side of the steering wheel, we can close out any of our notifications. And we wanna be on our digital mile per hour display uh, just to ease with knowing what settings we are entering. So to enter our setup mode for the Pulsar LT, we do that simply by pressing our cruise cancel button. You will press and hold for about five seconds and you will see the speedometer sweep all the way up to 140. 
at which point we can let go of the button and the Pulsar LT is now in setup mode. Now each individual application and the settings will be different so you will want to refer to your quick reference guide included with the module to know what setting adjusts what features. So in this 3.0 liter Duramax we want to adjust our factory speed limiter. So to do this, this is setting one in this particular truck. Again, it may be different for your gas application. To enter this setting, we want to press the cancel button. You'll see the speedometer sweep and come back to what the setting is. You can see here that our factory speed limiter is set at 108 miles an hour. Now using our cruise resume and set buttons, we can toggle up and down to set that speed limiter at whatever mile per hour we would prefer. Let's say 115. We will press the cruise cancel button again and you will see the speedometer sweep, letting us know that that setting has now been saved. At this point, we can press and hold our cruise cancel button again until the speedometer sweeps to re-enter our setup mode and move on to the next setting. Now we will adjust for an aftermarket tire size. In this particular truck, this is setting three. Again, use your reference guide to know which setting is which for your engine and model. We're gonna press the cruise cancel button to enter and it is first gonna ask for our factory tire size. You can see that the mile per hour reads 32. This is the large number of our tire. And then it will ask us for our half inch size, zero, one through 10. This is an exactly 32 inch tire, so we want to leave at 32.0. We will press the cruise cancel button again. The speedometer will sweep. Now it is gonna ask us for our aftermarket tire size. We have done a leveling kit and a mild tire upgrade, which is a 33 inch. Using our tape measure, the tire actually measures 32.8 inches. So we wanna make sure that this first one is at 32. Press the cruise cancel button, and then we can toggle through using our resume and set buttons to get to eight for a 32.8. We will press the cruise cancel button again. The speedometer will sweep letting us know that our modified tire size has now been saved and our speedometer should read correctly for the new tire size. Again, to enter that setup menu, we wanna press and hold the cruise cancel button. Speedometer will sweep and we can let go. Now we want to, let's disable the auto start stop feature in this truck. For the 3.0 liter Duramax, this is setting eight. Again, for the other gas applications, the settings will be different, so make sure that you're using your quick reference guide included with the Pulsar LT. We want to press the cruise cancel. The speedometer will sweep again. At this point, we have the option to select zero miles per hour, which leaves the auto start stop enabled, just like factory, so that it will work with your factory button. If we scroll up, to the 10 mile an hour setting. This will disable that feature for good so that the auto start stop will no longer function and you no longer have to press the button on the factory dash anytime you wanna turn this feature off. It will remain off all the time. So to activate this system, we can just press and that will save our factory auto start system into the disabled mode so that it no longer functions speedometer will sweep back to zero and we have completed that function. One of the other great features to the Pulsar LT is the built-in throttle booster that is adjustable on the fly while you're driving. With the engine running, uh, whether you're in park or you're driving, you can control that throttle boost setting simply with the cruise control resume and set buttons. So with our cruise control off, we can simply press our cruise control resume button and you'll see the speedometer climb to the 50 mile an hour, which is the setting five, the most responsive setting. By simply pressing that toggle button down, 
it will change settings to four, three, two, one, and zero. This will adjust how sensitive the throttle is, which makes it much nicer for daily driving, accelerating quicker from a stop, takes away that dead pedal and that lag that you feel in the GM application. This can be adjusted at any time while driving, as long as your cruise control is disabled at the time you try to adjust it. Obviously with the cruise control enabled, this button is going to change your mile per hour that the cruise is set at. So make sure that you turn your cruise off and you can adjust your throttle sensitivity at any time.